Hey everybody, welcome back to Photorec.tv. I'm Toby, and I've been reviewing Sony cameras for many years, but the first one I purchased for myself was the Sony a7R II in 2015, and then a few years after that, I upgraded to the Sony a7R III, mostly for that better battery life and that autofocus joystick that made things so much easier. That a7R III traveled the world with me and was a great, is still a great camera. When the a7R IV was announced, it offered some really nice improvements, but not enough to tempt me to upgrade. However, when the A1 was announced, ridiculously fast autofocus and 8K video and 30 frames per second, all wrapped into one travel-friendly camera that remained basically the same size and weight as my A7R III, well, I bought it. And now it seems like you can have almost all of the power of that Sony A1, plus some nice improvements, and save over $2,500 by buying the Sony a7R 5 Let me ask you a quick question. You got $6,500. You could get this, or you could get all of this. Huh. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. I can save you 10% off your first Squarespace purchased, and you can support this channel by starting at squarespace.com slash photorectv and building yourself a gorgeous website or gallery. All right, I want to hit the highlights. I was shooting in Alaska for about two weeks, including nights well below zero, using the A7R5. The goal of the trip was mostly to photograph a world-class dog sledding race during the day and chase the aurora at night. And I used the A7R5 and I'm coming away impressed. Let's hit the high points. The focusing system and the focus feedback is excellent. What I mean by that is this camera does a great job of showing you just what it's locked onto so you've got peace of mind that you're getting your subject in focus. And then on top of that, that focus is fairly fast and quite reliable. You've got a latest generation Sony AF system in here, which gives you tracking for humans, animal, bird, insects, that's great for macro, cars, trains, and airplanes. Now these modes really help lock onto the subject area that is usually most important to have in focus, allowing you to think more about composition and framing. And that really is helpful, especially with fleeting moments, and it all works quite well. Another thing that I love, the new screen design. It's so good. You have all the benefits of a completely flip out articulating screen and a tilting screen as well. I do like being able to reverse the screen for travel that just kind of adds a little bit of extra protection and because it pulls away before it does it articulation, be if you want, you don't have to worry about running into anything on the ports here on the side. And along with that, an L bracket. It's easy to run an L bracket. It doesn't need any weird space or gaps in it for your hinge there either. And if you're wondering in some of these shots, that's the A1's L bracket from Kirk. I really love it. It's an affordable L bracket, low profile, and it works great on the A7R5. I'll put a link to that right down below. You know what else I love? If you take a minute to like this video, I put a lot of effort into it. Now, another thing to tell you, the viewfinder. It's big and it's a very high resolution. It actually matches the Sony A1 and it's that's something I've gotten used to on the A1 and really appreciate. And it's nice to see it in a much more affordable camera. When you look around at the competition in this price range, the R5 and even the Nikon Z9, their menus, sorry, their viewfinders are lower resolution. Their menus, however, might be a little bit better. So let's talk about the menu. The Sony menu systems are, well, we like to complain about them, right? They are, these cameras are feature rich and the menus are dense and they're not always so logically organized. I have spent time complaining about them, but I have to say in the latest version of the A7R5, it's not bad. And being able to use touch to move through the menu is helpful. And the A7R5 has added a new page called Menu Main. And that makes it fast to access often used settings. So now between that menu main and the function screen, you spend a little time setting those up and customizing them the way you need. And then you're going to spend very little time digging through the menu system. And again, the touch sensitivity of these menus is working very well for me. Another highlight, and it might be a little funny because this hasn't changed, but 60 megapixels. Yes, it is the same sensor as the previous model, but image quality remains excellent here. I felt that way when I reviewed the a7R4. I mean, there's so much detail in these shots, 
These sensors in the A7R5 and A7R4, they remain near the top of the list in full-frame cameras for amount of detail at resolution with dynamic range, and I find the noise levels to be excellent. Why, well, one complaint with the A7R4 though, well, I had a couple complaints, but my main one was it felt really sluggish. I mean, the buffer was small, the camera was a little slow at times, and especially importing and then working with those files in Lightroom was painful for me back then. And I think that was late fall of 2018 is when I reviewed that camera. But the A7R5 has, has solved that. We have updated USB-C 3.2 transfer. It's so, so fast. We have support for dual CF Express cards. And I have also upgraded a Mac since then. All of those combine to make a camera and make a system now that is very responsive. I'm actually blown away with how fast these images will download. And in addition to shooting in lossless compressed, you now have smaller raw sizes available too. And that's great when you don't need full 60 megapixels, say shooting a time-lapse of the Aurora or just some other time where you don't want all of the resolution of this camera. The trick, however, is not forgetting to switch back when you do want the full resolution. So I mentioned that dual CF Express card support in both slots. That's excellent. You can write to both at the same time, allowing peace of mind backup. You know, I don't think you're going to see buffer slowdowns unless you are a crazy heavy finger on the shutter button shooter. I shot for... 200 images, 250 images shooting compressed raw at 10 frames per second before I started to see a slowdown. Do the math. That's a long period of time of holding down the shutter. Now, this obviously comes at the expense of having to buy a CF Express card, two of them, which are expensive. So if this camera is near the top of your budget, just keep that in mind. All right. When I switched to an SD card, I was able to get just 105 with the fastest SD cards on the market. So a pretty significant difference. And that's something, again, to keep in mind. And I'll say it again, having those CF Express cards really does improve the speed of downloading the photos as well. Now let's take a few moments to talk about this 10 frames per second because there's, there's actually a lot to unpack here. Uh, one huge difference that we need to highlight between the A1 and the A7R5. The A1 is capable of up to 30 frames per second with its electronic shutter with no blackout. That means as you look through the viewfinder, it's very easy to track fast moving subjects because your view is never blocked. And because it's electronic, it can be completely silent, which I found useful in some situations, and is way less mechanical wear and tear on your camera. Now, it is important to note that you need to be using Sony lenses. If you use a third-party lens, you're going to drop to 20 frames per second. And I'll also say that almost all of the time I've shot 30 frames per second, I find myself at least deleting every other frame, if not more. So I don't know how often I actually need 30 frames per second. Now, it's important to note that with 10 frames per second on the A7R5, that's only available actually with a mechanical shutter, and you have to be shooting compressed RAW. If you step up to the higher quality mode, you're dropping down to seven frames per second. You also drop down to seven frames per second when using the electronic shutter. And this is another point to highlight, a big difference between these cameras. Despite having similar size sensor, 50 megapixels in the A1, 60 megapixels in the A7R5, the design of the sensors is quite different. And the Sony A1 sensor readout is fast enough that you can use the electronic shutter for fast moving subjects. And I almost always use my A1 with electronic shutter on. I estimate that I'm approaching about 100,000 photos captured with the A1 over the last couple of years. And the actual mechanical shutter count remains below 6,000. By contrast, the Sony A7R5 sensor readout, significantly slower. Not something I'm going to recommend for faster action. You might get some distortion. But it is still very useful for landscapes, time-lapse, and architecture. Now, let's switch gears a little bit and talk briefly about video. Both of them offer 8K video. And, you know, I know people say 8K, I don't have an 8K TV, although they are becoming more and more common. For me, it's not about publishing out 8K footage, but it's more often shooting 8K and then being able to crop in or punch in for additional reach. That is great with distant wildlife that I want to capture and share with you all. Now, 
The video features in the A7R5 are decent, but not as strong as the A1, which has some additional modes and higher quality offerings and higher bit rates and 1080 and 4K can look better. In fact, it's actually not even as good as the cheaper Sony A7 IV, which has a better, higher quality 4K and 1080 with less rolling shutter, but you do sacrifice 8K. Now, I don't want you thinking the A7R5 is bad for video, but it's just not the best hybrid camera in Sony's lineup. Though, I'd be perfectly happy with it for my travels and work for this channel. And just to give you a base of reference there, I'm actually filming this review on my original Sony A7R II, purchased seven years ago. I think it looks fine, as long as I pay attention to focus and lighting. Anyway, I do like the little quick switch over here for switching video and photo and slow-mo mode on its own dial. And speaking of buttons and switches, the ergonomics on this camera are great. This is a camera that if you already own an A7 IV or the A1 or even the A7S III, they're all going to feel very similar in hand. And especially since you can remap the record button to whatever you want, depending on what mode you're in, that's all good. So you can make it feel very, very similar. The exposure compensation dial has gone blank. Oh, I'm on the fence about that. I use it as exposure compensation, so I like to see where it's set. Uh, but now that it's blank, it can be remapped to something else. It's added to the list of customizable camera functions. Speaking of customizable, Squarespace offers a beautiful way to build a website that you can easily customize. Many of you watching this are photographers and Squarespace provides beautiful portfolios and gallery pages. All you need to do is pick the one you like and then drag and drop your photos to create your own gorgeous galleries that are so customizable too to really make it your own. And it's really all that easy, but if for any reason you do get stuck, they offer 24 seven customer support. If you want to sell your work, they have an integrated e-commerce system that is incredibly simple to set it up. They also offer appointment scheduling, booking, and email and marketing tools. And I know email seems a bit old fashioned, but it remains an excellent way to reach your potential customers. And the way the email system is integrated into Squarespace is excellent. Squarespace truly is a fantastic all-in-one platform. You can try them out for free for 14 days. No credit card required. Start at squarespace.com slash TV to save 10% off your first purchase. Before we get to a handful of features that the A7R5 offers over the A1, let's hit one more big benefit of the A1, and that is the blazing fast autofocus. Truthfully, in my testing in Alaska, I didn't see a huge difference between these cameras dogs sled dogs they're running about eight to ten miles per hour right at me both cameras did very well the a7r5 did well and again that feedback of what it's focusing on is great but some additional testing and of course just over the years experience with the a1 it is incredibly fast in all situations and super sticky meaning when you get it tracking something it really sticks and tracks very very well I think the A7R5 is going to be fast enough for most of us based on my testing, but it doesn't offer quite the same speed and tenacity when tracking. I do, however, appreciate those additional focus subjects that are listed there that I mentioned already. Humans, animals, birds, insects, cars, trains, and airplanes. And again, it does a better job of showing you what it's tracking and where it's focused. It just quite isn't as fast. And that's a big part of what you're paying for in the A1 that plus those 30 frames per second. Now, a feature that the A7R5 has that the A1 is missing, well, I already mentioned that main menu page, that's nice, but we also have bulb timer. Well, what an idea, again, I've talked about this in the past. That's simply where you put the camera into bulb mode, you press the shutter, it gives you an on-screen timer. It's so simple, it's something many other manufacturers have offered for years, but up until now, Sony has not. You also have the ability now to focus bracket. That's capture a series of photos at different focus points. This is excellent to give you front to back sharpness in some landscape shots or macro as well. You are gonna need to post process these into one photo after import. It doesn't happen in camera. And the feature that most of us will benefit from probably the most is eight stops of in-body image stabilization versus five and a half in the A1 and, and the other Sony cameras. That's really nice for travel low light interiors means you're going to be able to more likely leave the tripod behind and still get sharp shots 
And again, this is really impressive with such a nice high resolution sensor. Nice job, Sony. All right, we can start to wrap this up. Overall, I wanna say the Sony A7R5 is an excellent camera offering a massive amount of high quality megapixels in a nicely responsive package with a gorgeous large and high resolution viewfinder, the best articulating rear screen on the market. Do I have to specify a rear screen? Any cameras offer a front screen. The best articulating screen on the market and a great focusing system. All of that plus some additional features that Sony has added would make it my pick for walking out the door for most of my landscape photography. Actually, most of my photography except faster wildlife. If you have a question about this camera, you can drop them in the comments below. And if you're an A1 user feeling a little sad, like me, hey, it happens. It's the march of progress. And, you know, honestly, Sony could make me pretty happy with a firmware update that will add some of those features to the A1 that the A7R5 now has. I'd love to know what feature you would like to see added to a future camera or your current camera. You can look down in the comments for two features I really want Sony to add in the future. Hi there. Welcome in the Arctic. Welcome to PhotoRec Toby. This time with Frank. We're here in the Arctic. Toby is frozen. He can barely hold his phone, but he can't speak to the camera. So it's just me today. We are out here in Central Hot Springs along the Stees Highway and we're photographing frosted trees in really deep temperatures. I would guess it's minus 30 or something. So it's really fresh. And I will stop now and try to thaw up Toby that he can continue with his channel. Stay tuned. And what I learned, you always have to press the click button down there. So I do this too. Click it down there.